Hi everyone, this is a revision video um, covering one of the main things that might come up in your exam on Monday, um, which is major developments in technology. So I'm going to go through a few of these different things. Um, none of this is too scary. You may hear Mr Johnson talking away in the back. He's actually doing a revision session right now, but hopefully this is going to be um, useful for you. So there have been big improvements across the years in terms of developments in um, technology. Um, one of the main kind of areas that you can talk about is the development in batteries. So batteries used to be these big chunky things that you can see here. They also did not used to be rechargeable. So the invention of new types of batteries, especially lithium batteries, um, which you will find in all of our modern technology, things like your Dyson vacuum cleaner, your iPhone, um, lots of products that are now portable are making use of these much more advanced batteries. Um, so these are some of the major, um, these are kind of major improvements that have happened throughout the years. Now, vacuum tubes are quite interesting because this is what used to be in um, TVs and radios. So these are basically um, what this thing replaced. This is called a transistor. And as you can see from the size, this is, you know, if you imagine a vacuum tube is about this big, a uh, transistor is about that big. OK, so you can see this vacuum, these vacuum tubes, they used to go into old TVs and radios. They used to be very delicate, easy to break. Transistors now, modern transistors, are absolutely tiny and you can fit millions of them into a circuit. So obviously that's going to make a big difference with things like portability and the size of uh, that products can be now. And the other massive thing is integrated, integrated circuits. OK, so these are called ICs and they go from this one to the old ultra large scale to these. So nowadays there are now 10, so what's that, 10 billion uh, components on a circuit like this, which is a huge improvement to what we used to used to have. So this is developing all the time how small and how fine you can make things like these um, integrated circuits, which obviously has a massive impact on the power of um, technology on the size, on the weight. Um, so, you know, all of these developments in technology have a massive impact on products. So if we talk about that in a little bit more detail, um, in the early 19th century, there was a big development in batteries. So these kind of came in in the early 19th century and they started to be able to be used in things like portable lighting and motors and switches. Um, in the early 20th century, you had the vacuum tube come in, which is one reason why radios used to be absolutely colossal. So they used to be really, really big with one of these vacuum tubes on the inside um, and things like um, they were basically like early sort of amplifiers um, trans, uh, kind of things. So they were used in radios, TVs, computers, and these products were large. Now, if you remember only one of these in the 1940s, the transistor came in. This was a massive change. OK, so this massive change basically means that things could be much more portable. And it happened that there was a massive reduction in the size of electronic products. That's one of the biggest ones. And nowadays you can see that these integrated circuits. So think of a circuit board. Um, you might have made one of these in key stage three in Balcaris. It might have started with just a few sort of connections on it, something like this, maybe with a few wires coming off. But now they are they have millions of components and they're being used to make things like supercomputers and really powerful mobile um, devices. So the improvements in integrated um, circuits, circuit boards. Um, has seen the, the development of much more powerful, powerful portable products. OK, you might want to put pause here. There are some other technological developments that happened that have happened throughout the years that have helped to improve products and change products. So have a pause and see if you can think 
of what these sentences are referring to. Then we'll go through them in the moment. OK, let's go through these then. So a portability and convenience of enclosed magnetic recording tape. That was the cassette tape. So when that came out, that was massive. It was much more portable. It meant you could record things easily. Um, it was a lot better quality of sound. Um, let's go on to the next one. Removal of the requirement to store files on devices. Music streaming is absolutely colossal. Really, really, really important because it's meant that you don't need as much storage space on products. So, for example, um, on my phone, I have Spotify, so I stream music. I don't have to download every um, album onto my phone. Therefore, the storage on phones can be a little bit less, making room for other things. Um, right, next one. Uh, reliable, wear-free storage of digital files is a CD. And the wear-free is important because CDs are read by lasers. So nothing comes in contact with CDs. Um, rechargeable power and longer battery life. We've already spoken about lithium batteries were a big improvement. Um, also, you used to only have alkaline batteries. And those are those ones that we still use now that you buy and they run out and you throw them away. But now you I wouldn't say that you'd have to remember this name, but you can now buy rechargeable batteries, which means they can be reused. Um, this one was a big improvement. Uh, the user display interface, an LCD, a liquid crystal display. This was really big. OK, it was a big improvement. It allowed people to interact with products in a different way. Um, flash storage. Um, those of you that know the difference between a hard drive and a, um, a solid state drive, um, it's probably a little bit different to flash storage, but basically a, a, a hard drive is actually lots of disks that move around. Um, flash storage has no moving parts, so it's a lot quicker and a lot more reliable. OK. Um, MP3 was big, meant the development of things like the iPod. And, um, you know, that was a game changer in terms of portable music uh, playing. We have things like the miniature hard drive. Um, you know, again, that's just taking something that was once quite big. A hard drive was quite big in your computer and has obviously got smaller. That's to do with the uh, development of integrated circuits again. So everything just getting smaller. And um, the last one is the this is also a really big one. The development of the laser um, It's a non contact light transmission of CD data, but the laser was really big. So used in lots of different things. But the development of the laser in reading CDs and Blu-rays and things like that, obviously, is big. And obviously, because it's non contact, it, it's, uh, it improves the re reliability. So your uh, CDs, your DVDs are not going to be, um, you know, they're not going to wear out. They're not going to be damaged. OK, so here is a typical question. It says, with reference to two different technological developments, describe in detail how each has impacted on the evolution of modern electronic products. OK, so this is two times seven marks. This was actually the old style of exam, but something like this could come up. Um, you might want to have a go at answering this question with what we've just spoken through. Um, I'm going to show you some things that you could um, talk about. You could talk about the transistor. OK, so going from those um, valves to the transistor is meaning that products could be much smaller, reduction in cost, um, products were much more reliable. These valves actually gave off a lot of heat. Products would get quite warm. So it, off, it often meant them that they were much more efficient as well. And miniaturization, OK, so things getting much smaller was, oh, I can't even smell smaller, was due to the reduction in the size of components, OK, in the size, reduction size components, OK. Um, another one was the introduction of the laser in 1960 used um, you know used in CD DVDs used in mobile phones 
a carbon dioxide laser is actually used in the laser cutter that we use at school in Balcaris. Why am I writing your school name? You know where, you know where you go to school. And it also has medical applications. Um, the invention of the LED was really big in 1962. This replaced uh, more traditional um, bulbs. I realise I'm adding more content here, but this is all things that you could talk about. They are LEDs are very energy efficient. So where normal bulbs actually get very, very hot, they give out uh, a lot of heat, which makes them quite inefficient. Um, these are very en energy efficient, less heat com comes out of them, much more affordable. Um, and the development of different colours of LEDs gives them new possibilities of what they can be used for. So TVs nowadays use LED technology, which means the, the TVs can be thinner. OK, and also we're trying we're starting to get things called like OLED and things like that as well. So don't be afraid if you know anything about LEDs, don't be afraid to bring something like that into this answer. But with these questions, it's important that you talk about something that that you've um, you've got a bit of knowledge about. So don't revise all of these things. Think about which one might stick in your head. And the last thing um, that I'm going to talk about with this question is the um, this is a massive technology technological development okay might not come to your head straight away but when injection molding was um, developed it means that a huge range of products could be made things could be much more complex um, you could make uh, a huge range of different colors and large-scale production was much easier um, you didn't have to have as many different parts to the product because you could use fixings on the inside of the product so everything was a lot quicker and things could be, your products could be lighter, uh, smaller, and also really important for specifically for electronic products, polymers around the outside of an electronic product are obviously going to give insulation as well. So injection molding and manufacturing techniques have had a big impact on electronics as well, because being able to encase them in something that's been injection molded is a massive advantage. So I hope that makes sense. That is some technological developments that have happened over the last few years um, that have had a big impact on um, products, specifically electronic products. So think about those microelectronics, those integrated circuits, all of those different things. Um, next video, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about other parts of this um, topic. Hope that helps. See you on the next one.